it really started out of New York. Guys like Larry, Arthur Baker, Rick Rubin. These are like the pioneers of that sound. The 808 sound for me in present day, whether it was 20 years ago or now, to me it's become like an infinite stamp of time. I think the thing with uh, Larry Smith was that he would find these machines that would have a little bit more than what he already has and just go like this and he'll just dial these knobs in and it's just like, it's like this whole thing would just be amazing. From what I remember, he built up a studio and stuff. So I used to see like all the equipment just pushing forward with like the future and like just technology and stuff. He was really just a, a just a, to me like an alien, like someone that just came to this to this planet and just like showed us a way of of just taking instruments and just doing like the most amazing thing. That's who Larry Smith was. When you look at how iconic this machine has become through quite a few genres of music, it's important that we share this information. It's important for people to understand these records that really moved the needle forward for us in community and culture, this had a huge part of that. We're here to gather to talk about an iconic piece of gear that has played a tremendous role in my musical journey and how this plays a role in your creativity and where it can go and where you guys are pushing it. All right, so this is the, on my father's original TR-808. This machine is Run DMC's first two albums, all of Houdini, this is also licensed to Ill by Beastie Boys. Like, I'm so, like, it's hard for me not to do a stick up in this room and literally grab, <laughs> <laughs> grab this joint and be out. I, I mean, I, I'm not gonna lie, I feel very humbled by just sitting in front of this thing, because it's like, man, you, this is history. This is like the one that shouted years ago, and, and like, you couldn't see it, but now it's like, it's unveiled in front of you, and it's like, here you go. You hear it once and it's like, that's it. You know, you're, you're hooked. It's still the basics, like fundamentals, and there's so much sounds out now, like a crazy sound library. People do sound design and people always run back to, to the basics. You know, I've been in rooms with multiple 808s and yeah, side they by side, they personality. all sound different because they purposefully use low grade electronics. Claps are different pitches, kicks. That's why you find one that I think has such a, a, a great sound. It's just kind of inspiring to see how minimal it is, but at the same time, it hits. It's like, and especially that 808 that they showed. Like, it's, I want, I want that 808 so bad. The TR-808 is the signature hip hop it's the sound. Actually, to even hear it live, it's the sounds that we're used to hearing, but to hear it from the actual machine was like next level. The signature thing for the 808 is the bass, the, the kick drum. That boom, it was, it was like, it was like, blew my mind, it was crazy. People just hear that thump. It sounds good in the headphones, sounds good in the car, like, it's just fire. Those, those drums, man, like, I'll be right now, I'm like, all right, everybody hear A.O. now. <laughs> like, who would ever say through all forms of, of music and culture that this thing would still be here? It's not going anywhere. It was so crazy to have that piece of hardware like right there in front of me what made the most iconic songs or like an iconic piece of gear. I got the tools today to help move the culture forward, you know, because you can't know where you're going unless you know where you come from. The 808 is one of those machines now that has taken on a life of its own. And when, when I look at the youngsters and what they're doing with it now, I mean, it's just going to continue to move further and further and further. <laughs>